Hey, it's your girl, Amethyst One, aka Tristan Star, aka owner of I Make Hair Move. Um, and you can go to my website, imakehairmove.com. And I wanted to make a great video today to let you girls know how to get through beauty school and beyond. You want to go to beauty school and you're looking into finding the best school ever that's going to show you how to do highlights, low lights. Um, how to do manicures, pedicures, haircuts, so after you're done with beauty school, you can be like a pro. At the basics, what beauty school is for is to teach you the basics and to pass state board or your state school board. And um, I don't know how they do everything across the world but in the United States of America that is what you're going to beauty school for so when I say learning the basics you're going to be learning basic hair cutting techniques you're going to be learning basic color techniques basic foil techniques basic perm wrap techniques everything on a basic level so that you have a solid foundation for when you want to go out into the real world I hear a lot of people complaining about, oh, my school didn't show me this, my school didn't do that. All we did, we were so bored, we did the same highlights all the time. That's because with anything that you do to be great, you have to learn the basics. If you don't know the basics, you have nothing to build upon. Um, I have a special trick that I try to tell everybody who wants to get into cosmetology, is if you're at beauty school, you have to be prepared to kind of be bored for a little bit because it is the basics but if you are focused in on your teachers uh, asking your teachers questions asking your teachers what they did you know that is a great way to learn in intermediate skills um, in order to you know be above the rest of your classmates a lot of people don't take that resource a lot of people are more worried about the the politics of school and the drama and the friends and all all of these things but if you really hone in on a good teacher a teacher that you like and just ask them step by step what they did another thing that kind of builds off the theme about getting to know your teachers is most of your teachers are going to be working hairdressers or owning their own salons or they're going to be have been there done that so maybe when you get out of school your first job could be somewhere that your teacher recommended first of all the reason why that's a good thing is because they know you so if they know you and you're a hard worker while you're in school they're going to tell the next person she was a really or he was a really hard worker in school can you help him out or her out or whatever thing you have to know about being a cosmetology student is it is about your hours and it's about showing up being there being prepared uh, so that you can be ready for the next level I don't know how many girls I saw in beauty school take two month breaks take not come on time and things of this nature and I have to tell you the best route to getting in and getting out of beauty school is being there at a certain point in some schools in some states you can actually accelerate a little bit or accelerate a little bit not very much but in order to get in and get out when I went to beauty school I got in I got out and the big thing about that is you have to know your your plan of action a lot of people say I want to be a hairdresser but there's so many things you could do with cosmetology um, and so having a goal or uh, knowing what you want to do with it is best because when you get in and you get out you get to start working so hopefully you've picked out a couple of career paths or a couple of salons that you would like to work at tell them your interests first of all I think I said this earlier but there is a lot you can do with the cosmetology license so make sure to keep your eyes open make sure when you're studying in school that you're listening to everything that they say that you can do with this license because maybe being a hairdresser isn't for you maybe being more in the corporate world is for you and sometimes these corporate jobs do require you to be a cosmetologist maybe you want to be a nail tech that can do you know some haircuts on the side pay attention to all the stuff that you can do with the cosmetology license and that will help you pick out a career 
But a lot of people think that doing hair is a hobby, girl. And it's really not just that. If you want to do hair as a hobby, you might as well not pay money for tuition in beauty school. Because after you pay your tuition, you're going to have to find a way to make money. And so the first thing that I would do... And it, it, it really depends on the market where you live. But I would become an assistant. Um, I would do assisting for a couple of years. Find that top-notch hairstylist that you hear on all the news channels that are, you know, talking about salons or um, that you see all over the web in your um, community. And go there and tell them, hey, I would love to assist you. Um, a trick, though, of the trade is um, to ask them, like if they don't have an assisting program, tell them, I will assist you for free. Just um, have them give, if you have the financial means, just say, um, just give me tips. Tip me out when I do a blowout. Tip me out when I do a shampoo. Anything to get in the best salon that you can because even if you don't get a chair, when you put that on your resume, you know, I assisted with Bumble and Bumble's best stylist and blah, blah, blah. That is a good thing for your resume. That's one thing I wish I could, we had more of in Arizona. We don't have it that much. But if you do want to be an assistant, do that. The next thing you have to do is you really have to explore different hair salons before you pick one. So don't be so eager and so happy to say, okay, yeah, you know, this company hired me off the bat, so I'm gonna work for that company. That company has to mesh in with your bottom line. So if you like to do naturally curly hair and then you work at a, a, a European fine hair salon, it's not gonna be a good match for you. And just because they hired you, doesn't mean you're going to be able to stay there longer. In any job that you do, in any industry that you do, you do have to um, have a good job history. Jumping around from job to job isn't going to help you out. Um, and I don't know about where you live, but in most states, I think uh, booth rental is becoming the big thing. Everybody's doing booth rental. Nobody wants to do commission anymore. Um, and and so therefore, you have to be on your P's and Q's about building a clientele. My brother, which is a barber, shop, uh, barber, he he started his thing. It's called AZ Fresh Fades, and what he did while he was in school is every time he wasn't in school, he was at home doing t five dollar haircuts. Right, so he was already really good barber, but he was doing these five dollar haircuts. But he was building up his clientele. He graduated from school and took those clients to. Uh, you know, all the top name hair uh, salon, barber salons that he's worked at. And the reason why he has those clients is because he had them when he was in beauty school and beyond. So that's one thing you have to do. Build up a, a clientele just in case that you have to go to a booth rental situation. And booth rent is not cheap. But it's all about uh, it's all about knowing how to keep your finances intact. Knowing that you have to pay taxes even if you have... Um, if you are a booth renter. Um, also, you have to usually have insurances in, so, in certain instances. These are the things that beauty schools are not gonna you know, sit and talk to you about because they're about the bottom line, like I said. The last thing I will say about if you are looking into a career in cosmetology is no, we're not politicians. No, we're not uh, you know, the president of the United States, but do keep your name clean. Keep your name drama free because we work with people and very closely with people. If you are a waiter, um, there's a distance. When you're a hairdresser, you are touching them. You're very close to them. So you don't want to have that bad reputation, especially gossiping about your client's information. That's something that you cannot do. You can't do because if they don't trust you, they're not going to come back to you and they're going to tell their 10 girlfriends not to trust you. So keep that in mind. You are a people person and you're in the business of getting people to come to you. So that's all the advice I could think of off the top of my head. But if you have any more questions about starting a career in cosmetology, let me know what they are. Um, I've been I've been blessed to be in this um, industry since I was 17 years old. So I really enjoy it. I really love it. Go to imakehairmove.com if you want to see some of my work and what I specialize in. And, you know, never know. We could work together sometime in the future. So good luck with your journey. And please do all the research you can. Like I said, ask me any question that you have and I'll answer it. All right. Thank you. Bye.